Journey for Truth Radio is on a path to explore other people's lives and experiences. Through our exploration, we can find answers that can lead us to feel passionate and excitement for our lives as well. Listen right here. Hello and welcome to Journey for Truth on webtalkradio.net. Thank you for joining me. I'm Tammy Urbanik. Journey for Truth is always on demand and with many new episodes. There's going to be a fantastic seminar in Denver, Colorado, May 15th, 16th, and 17th, 2015. This one will feature information about alternate realities and the untapped tools for healing. It's all about the science of spirituality and the spirituality of science. It sounds fascinating. Go to JonahLifeInstitute.com for more information and to sign up while the discount still applies. My guest this week is Mr. Locario. Mr. Locario helps people in dating and their relationships, and I want to hear what sound advice he has to offer to us. Welcome. Hey, thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate it. It's great to have you on. How did you get into coaching others on their relationship? Um, well, basically, um, what happened was, you know, I, I used to, kind of, I was kind of like the only guy out of my group of friends who um, always had like a girlfriend or you know, was comfortable talking to women. So I had a couple of my friends who were kind of, um, you know, they wanted girlfriends. They wanted, you know, um, to, to actually go out on dates and stuff, but they were, you know, kind of scared to talk to girls and everything. So I I started just teaching my friends how to, uh, (laughs) you know, make certain things happen. And so through that, one of my friends, who's my business partner now, he was telling me that, you know, it'd be cool that if you can do this for a living and help other people with their relationships and stuff like that. So, you know, I just started really um, just doing videos on YouTube. And then I got like a really big response from um, people that were watching my videos and asking me for, you know, um, advice. And then I started writing articles and then, you know, articles turned into a book and then everything just kind of like snowballed from there. And then I just, you know, kept kept it going, you know. Oh, that's wonderful. So in your work that you've been doing, how what have you found that's been very common to people who are struggling to create a relationship? Um, well, the, the thing that I find, you know, the most difficult for, for most people is a lot of people are scared to, to be honest, you know, um, with themselves and also with other people. And, you know, that right there is where all the kind of like the difficulty starts because you know a lot of people are they're scared to be themselves because they're actually scared that they're not going to be accepted for who they really are and and what they're really about so they kind of you know put on a front or will kind of like you know put this mask on to basically try to impress somebody just to get you know some affection or to get someone to like them and so you know that's really like the wrong way to go and that's really how you know a lot of the the difficulties come through and you know i just tell people that you know if you're honest with yourself and honest about what you want and what you desire you know it's easier to attract what you want because you're you're being authentic and then you know that authenticity is going to attract you know what you really want instead of you know trying to be fake or trying to put on the show in order to get just somebody because a lot of times you know it's I always tell people it's not about just being in a relationship or just having a boyfriend or girlfriend. You know, it's about you really, you know, understanding who you are, but also having the right type of boyfriend or girlfriend that's with you so you can actually enjoy yourself while you're in the relationship, you know? That is so true. It's so true that we become collectively, as people, we become very uh, ingrained or programmed, if you will, to put on a mask or right. do what everyone else is doing, fit in, especially as we go through high school and right. in middle school, junior high, we're constantly taught you need to fit in, you need to fit in. And most kids want to fit in. So then we start putting on this act, as you put it. And I can see how it could be difficult or seemingly difficult to take off that mask later as an adult. Right, right. Because you're so used to doing that all the time. And you, and also you think that it's, you know, it's it's the way you you have to go about things in order to get what you want. And it's not, you know, you don't really have to do any of that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's much more fun to be yourself, I feel. Right. I agree. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> now, have you, that was a, kind of a common pattern that you have found. Have you, in the different people that you've worked with, mm-hmm. has there been anything that's come up that you found surprising that wasn't so common? Um, well, you know, sometimes, you know, like a couple of times I've, I've found that there are actually people who are, um, you know, in their late thirties, almost early forties sometimes who really never really actually been in a relationship or, 
uh, you know, I've met some guys um, that were, you know, virgins and they're still in their mid thirties and stuff. So I just, and it was like, you know, they, they didn't want to be virgins, but it was like, they never really had that much social interaction. So I was just, I was shocked that that was even happening. You know, I had guys write letters to me that were in the mid thirties that, you know, never really been with a woman, but they want a girlfriend. So that was like interesting. Or I've met women who were, you know, um, in their mid thirties going on forties, who's never really been in a long-term relationship and they wanted that. So I was just actually surprised that that was actually going on. And I didn't know that there were that many people that were, you know, um, that lived, uh, you know, like to thirties and forties and, and still hasn't really, you know, had that experience of dating and relationships and stuff like that. I wouldn't uh, suspect that either. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is very surprising. All right. You mentioned a moment ago that you help people take off their mask and uh, live their individuality or at least get in touch with their authenticity. Right. How do you go about teaching people how to treat others? I'm sure that's part of it, being authentic, but really uh, teaching others when they're in a relationship or treating others, excuse me, when they're in a relationship. Right. Well, you know, I, I always say that, you know, it's – it's um it's really by, you know, it's, it's sort of like you, you're sort of leading by example. So I always tell people, you know, if you're, if you're honest with a person or you're honest, first you're honest with yourself, but then you're also honest with the people that you're talking to or the people that you're, you know, want to date or want to have a relationship with, you know, that honesty, um, it, it opens up, uh, the energy for that other person to be honest. Cause a lot of times, you know, the reason why, uh, you know, most people aren't honest or aren't forthright with what, with who they are and what they're about is because they feel that, they're going to be judged or, you know, people are going to have a bad opinion of them. But let's say, for example, if you're on a date with someone and you say something that like sounds kind of embarrassing or even sounds personal, you know, that person might feel, um, you know, okay to also tell you something personal. So it's like, you know, it's really just opening up that connection. That's going to let, you know, people really, you know, be able to actually also be, you know, be just feel good to be honest and, and, and explain, express who they are you know what i mean so it's like when you're out there and you're 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 talking to people and you you know you want to have a connection and you want to um you know just have a positive interaction with someone you know it starts from you putting that out there and and it's like you know you almost taking that lead to let the other person know like hey look you know i'm it's okay if you if we discuss this or it's okay if we have this dialogue and you know i'm not going to judge you i'm not here to you know uh look at you funny or whatever like that you know what i mean so i, I feel like once that person feels that they're okay with just being honest, then it opens up the floodgates for everybody else around them to be honest. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I think it's, it's very important that people understand that aspect. Absolutely. Honesty, I have found to be very crucial in a relationship. Right. And just as you were talking earlier, just being yourself and being authentic. Do right. you, and I can also imagine how scary that might be. Uh, I've met a lot of people who mm-hmm. are very authentic, and I've met a lot of people who are so caught up in their mask and so caught up in this fake personality mm. that, that they do judge and they do look down and right. they do ridicule. How do you talk people through that process of there are those situations where you are judged and ridiculed? Mm. Right. And, 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 you know, it's, it's one thing, it's, it's something that, you know, you, you kind of have to understand that the way society is, it's sort of, it's sort of, uh, you know, built like that, but it's like, as far as you, if you know, if you're aware of, of that actually happening, you know, you can sort of, you know, separate that from, from really getting to you emotionally. So basically, for example, you know, if you're, you know, um, having a conversation with someone and you're talking to somebody and, you know, you're just being honest and you're being yourself and then that person is judging you, you know, you got to understand that, you know, don't take it personally. You got to understand that that person, that's just how they're used to, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, interacting with somebody so that if you're aware of that, you know, you can understand that you don't have to take it personally, but don't, don't, don't re- make that reflect badly on you and then feel like you need to be, you know, back in your shell. You know, you understand you have to mm-hmm. just let that honesty shine through because at some point that the reason why that person is judging you is because they're not comfortable with themselves yet. You understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. So it's like if you, if you just continue to be you and then, you know, at some point that person might realize like, Hey, this person's kind of cool. They're just, you know, doing their own thing. And that it, it, it kind of rubs off. See the end. I always tell people the energy that you put out there, you know, it's going to rub off on everyone else. It's kind of like sometimes, you know, if you, you know, I, I know friends who work at different, you know, um, places and they say like, you know, sometimes 
if their boss comes into the room, into the office, it's just like this energy, you know, if they have a mean boss, then that, that negative energy just, you know, it, it takes over the home room, the whole room. If they have a nice boss, the energy, like where he's upbeat and everything else, it just takes over the whole room. So it's like the energy that you continuously put out there, it's going to, you know, it's going to really catch on. So that's why I say, you know, it's, it's best for you as the person to, you know, your, for yourself to just keep that energy up and keep that honesty and that positivity out there because then you can be the, the person that's influencing, you know, those interactions. And mm-hmm. that's, and that's how you attract more people who are, you know, gonna, you know, eventually go on the same page as you. You mm-hmm. see what I mean? Absolutely. Being authentic and having that. What you're talking about is having that deep level of self-confidence or at least working towards developing a deep level of self-confidence. And even when that ridicule and judgment does happen, because it will at some point in some situations, just as you were stating, not taking it personally and and letting it go. So important. Right. It's a little scary sometimes, but uh, still very (laughs) important. It takes practice, too. You know, it takes practice because, you know, if if you've been living, if you're a 25-year-old person, you've been living on this earth for 25 years and, and you've been dealing with, you know, people not being authentic, you know, you understand? So it's like, you're in a world where it's so many people who are are not just, you know, they're not being themselves. They're scared to be themselves. They're scared of being judged. But it's like, once you're aware of that, and once you have awareness of who you are, you know, then it's, it's really a a blessing, you know, to understand that, Hey, I understand what I'm about and it's okay for me to be myself. And it's okay for me to express myself because once I do that, you know, it's, it's the authenticity is going to attract what I really, you know, what I really want and what I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, what about situations where you have found a person just really holds on to rigid patterns, uh, usually from their childhood, and those patterns just keep getting in their way? Have you found those types of situations? Oh, yeah, all the time, all the time. You know, it's, and, and it's, just, it's, just, it's just like a, um, it's an understanding that it, it's, it's something that has to um, be practiced, it's, you know, because the thing is, is, is that if it's, it, it's a habit of thinking that we have, you understand? Like we have, like, I, you know, I always found it funny. Like I had a, um, a client one time and he, you know, he, um, he went on a date with this really, this really attractive woman. And he said to himself, he was like, you know, he was like, Oh, I, I got lucky, um, because I got to, you know, like be with her. And the, all the other times when he would talk to women and he would get rejected, he would always blame himself. And I, you know, I said to him, I was like, it's interesting that when you actually um, have a good interaction with a woman, you keep saying that you're getting lucky. But when you have a, a, a not so good interaction or, or what you seem to think is not a good interaction, you you blame yourself. So it's kind of like your pattern of thinking is saying, well, when negative stuff happens to me, it's my fault. But when good stuff happens to me, it's out of my control and I'm just getting lucky. You know what I mean? So mm. it's like. Mm-hmm. Our our pattern of thinking, it makes us think in a, in a certain direction. So when, when a person has something, you know, deep rooted from, uh, you know, years and years of, of feeling a certain way, it's something that needs to be consistently worked on as far as them, um, you know, uh, going in the direction of the positivity and of bringing that energy um, in a certain direction. So it's like, you know, it's nothing that's going to technically happen overnight. But right. it's something that you consistently work on and, and, and you, and it's all about awareness because if you're aware of the fact that, you know, I always tell people it's, it's okay to, to, um, to, to know that, okay, well, I'm, uh, I fear this or I have issues with this. And it's good that you know you have the issues because now you're aware of it. But so now that you're aware of it, how do we, um, you know, fix this? How do we make this into a better situation? You understand? Right. And, and once you know that, that's what you can continuously work on and practice and, and, and continuously, you know, go in that direction. And that's how you really get better. And that's how you get better results. You see what I mean? A- absolutely. And consistency is the key that you were talking about that if you have been in a, if you've been stuck in a pattern for 25 right. years or 30 years, whatever, you're not going to change that pattern by trying to just make a different choice one time. Right. After, <laughs> after 25 years of right. the same old choice. Exactly. Right. Consistency and really being aware, like you were stating. Let's talk about when people finally do create a relationship. They've They've worked for it. They're looking at their authenticity. Maybe it's not perfect and there's still some work to do there, but they've taken some steps. They've, they're in a relationship, but now they're scared to stay in it. Right, right. What, what, <laughs> what do you do with that? Or do you know where that comes from? What advice can you offer? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of times people, it's kind of like, you know, people are scared of success. This, you know, um, it's, it's that whole thing where, you know, things are going too well and I'm scared something's going to go wrong. And, you know, I always tell people, you know, enjoy, enjoy the moment of, you know, while you're in the relationship and enjoy what you're, what, you know, how it is and, and not really be scared of the fact that things are going good because, you know, you want things to go good. You want things to, to, to thrive and, and, and to, actually like you know keep going but also i tell people that you know you have to enjoy uh the moments that you have in a relationship and i think most people don't enjoy their relationships or they'll have issues in the relationship mainly because they're always worried about it ending they're worried about it not going well they're worried about what's going to go wrong and they're not really enjoying the time that they have with the person and you know and i always say like every relationship that you have really is just a collection of moments like the like no relationship lasts forever not not one relationship lasts forever because even if you're married for 20 years you know if your spouse dies it's over so it, right. it didn't last forever you know what I mean like or you can have a relationship with someone for one month and that could have been a really great month you had you guys had fun you hung out or whatever and then let's say that person moved to another country or you, it some happened where it just didn't work out you know it's okay it's just that you enjoyed that moment but if you were just with them for that month worrying every day about you know oh my goodness what's going to happen what's going to happen later what's going to happen at this time you're never really in the relationship to to enjoy it because your mind and your energy was not there so I always tell people just enjoy every moment that you're in the relationship and don't worry about what's going to happen later and on and you know what's going to happen you know a couple weeks down the line just you know enjoy the time now and and have fun doing it while while it's while it's happening you that know? is yes, and that is sound advice, not just in terms of a relationship, but in terms of your relationship with your environment, your relationship right, with yourself. Right. It really learning how to enjoy what you have instead of looking at what you don't have or all of these horrible things that could possibly happen down the road. Right, exactly. And and it, it makes a lot of sense that you have found that many times people are just they're somewhere else. Their mind, their energy is somewhere else, and they're not even really fully invested in the relationship. That that happens a lot too. Now, right. communication that is really a hot topic for a lot of different folks. What advice can you offer for people to help them improve their communication skills? Um, I would say well, one important thing that I think most people miss out on is that um, men and women sort of we have like sort of different communications patterns, you know. And I think that it it, it would be beneficial for men to understand how women communicate and for women to understand how men communicate and, and see where it, we kind of like, you know, cross paths in certain situations, because a lot of times there's a lot of miscommunication um, generally because, you know, a man might be expressing himself a certain way and a woman just doesn't get it. And she might interpret it as something more than it really is and vice versa. So it's like, I think that there has to be, you know, an understanding from each, you know, gender, like, okay, I understand, you, you know, generally you guys are like this and women, you know, you might be like that, but also understand the individual that you're with. Cause even though, you know, we, we might be the same in certain aspects, we're still all individuals at the end of the day. So understand who you're with and understand, um, you know, if you're being clear with the person that you're communicating with, because I think a lot of times we're not, you know, we might say some certain things and we might, um, we talk about certain things and we think that we, we were being clear, but you know, we were, we weren't. And then that's where the miscommunication comes in. And then that's where the conflict comes in because we each weren't really on the same page. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important that people understand that, you know, w once we're having this communication that we both are on the same page and we both know what we're talking about and where we're going with, the, with what we're saying, mm -hmm. you know? And communication is so important for a healthy relationship. I certainly needed to learn how to communicate effectively when I first right. married my husband almost 17 years ago. And the first few years of our marriage, it was very much headbutting. Right, right, right. We, neither one of us were very effective in what we were trying to express. It was more of a reaction. And, and there was definitely this process of here's how I'm feeling, here's here's what I need, instead of here's what you're doing wrong, or here's what you need to change, and and really learning to discern the difference, and and also developing good timing, having right, the, right. Best, the best timing to have a conversation with someone when you want them to really hear you and what you're trying that to say. That is true, that is true, and a lot of times, you know, I, I, people kind of get their, their egos uh, and their feelings 
caught up in the in the communication sometimes and i feel like you know it, it, it's 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 very delicate how you have to communicate sometimes so for example like i had a friend who you know we would go out and hang out sometimes and then his his girlfriend you know she thought that you know he was hanging out with you know wanted to always hang out all the time because he didn't want to hang out with her mm. like he was you know so she was mm-hmm. like oh why do you want to hang out with him don't you like hanging out with me and stuff and he's like no you know so he had to tell her, he said, you know, I, I love hanging out with you. I love being with you and I love you. But sometimes he's just saying, look, sometimes for myself, I want to hang out with my friends, you know, hang out with my boys. And, we, you know, we have man time where we just hanging out with, with each other. So, you know, he had to ex- she had, he, he explained that to her. And, you know, it, 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 it made her feel better. And she, and she understood because before she was under the assumption that he kept coming out and hanging out with us because he didn't want to be with her. You know what I mean? So that was going on in her head. But the communication that he, you know, the way that he let her know, like, hey, no, this is just something that I, you know, I need some me time for myself and to hang out with my friends. And, you know, it has nothing to do with how, how I feel about you and I still love you and all this other stuff. So I think, you know, when people, uh, you know, there needs to be that communication because, you know, I think I always say, you know, one conversation can change everything. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, yes. cause it's like, you know, we have this resentment or we have this animosity because we're, we're always assuming this and that. And it's like, you know, you're assuming stuff, but what you're assuming might not be what's really happening. So it's really important to have that, you know, conversation and, and see where things go. Mm-hmm. Most definitely. And then also that leads into another topic that comes up for a lot of different couples. There are different, there are some couples who have, they have their separate time, they have their friends, they have their, their personal things they like to do, and then they have their couple time. And then you have some relationships where everything is couple time. Everyone right. has their own preferences. But I have always found it important that you have your own individual preferences, your own individual likes and different things that you like to do just to maintain your own sense of individuality. Right. I agree. I agree. And, you know, I think it's people, you know, where we are individuals, you know, and and when we come together, we come together to benefit each other. But at the same time, you know, we're still individuals. It's, It's the same way where if you have kids you know, you raise your kids, but at some point when the kids get older, they're going to, you know, they're going to be out the house. They're going to probably get, you know, when they get older, they're going to get their own place. They're going to get a boyfriend or girlfriend. So they're going to be doing all these other different things because they are individuals. And, you know, it's like, even though we have these relationships and we, we enjoy each other's company, it's, you still have to respect the fact that, you know, the person that you are with is an individual and there's going to be some things that that individual needs for themselves and, you know, personally. You know what I mean? And that, and that could be like, sometimes they need some space away from everybody. They may, they may say, yeah, you know, sometimes I just want to, you know, uh, go for a walk by myself and I'll come back and then we'll hang out. You know what I mean? And that, and that could be what it is. And for that person, but again, it still, it still comes up to, to communication because, you know, you just want to make sure that everybody understands like what it is because for, for some reason, a lot of times, you know, um, and people, they kind of take things personally because they, yes. they look at the relationship like, well, since you're doing this, that means you're doing this because of something I did or didn't do. And, you know, and, and a lot of times that has nothing to do with the other person. It's just that, hey, this is what I like to do. And this is what I like to, to you know, make happen in certain situations at certain times. And it has nothing to do with how I feel about you or what's going on with you. And I think more people need to understand that by having you know, their alone time or having like time for themselves or having time for, you know, stuff that they like to do individually. And I think that, you know, should be discussed in a relationship. That should be something like, you know, mm-hmm. I feel like if you're in a relationship, you should know your boyfriend or girlfriend, you know, um, likes to do this or likes to do that. You know, like for example, my, my wife, she, she loves to like, you know, ride her bike everywhere like she's a bike rider you know so she'll just go out and be like hey i'm gonna go you know take a ride or whatever and just to go do it you know what i mean and, and that's it's cool like that's what she does mm-hmm. you know what i mean and i like to go to the movies all the time my wife she's not really um you know like a super movie type of person all the time so i'll go to the movies by myself and just be like i'll see you later i'll go to the movies and that's that's that is it's what it is you know so she'll go ride her bike while you go yeah to the movie. <laughs> exactly right you know what I mean? So that's how it goes you know Mm-hmm. Oh, I completely understand that. I love I love going for hikes, but not everyone in my family likes to do that. So right, you know, right. I go take two hours or hour and a half, and I'll go on a five six mile hike, and it's all good. Right. So you've been uh, you've been on VH1, you've been on the Tyra Banks show. Uh, talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So um, well, I was on VH1 for um, 
a reality show actually. It was back in the day called um, I Love New York. So it was like a, actually like a dating reality show. And so I did a, a couple of episodes of that. And I was also on the Tyra Banks show for a, a episode where we were talking about um, scientific dating. And the question was, is, is there a way to break down dating as a science yeah. and stuff like that? So we were, we were, you know, I was on the panel actually talking about, um, you know, uh, like if that's true or not or what, I, you know, my my um, like opinion on that. So that was that was pretty interesting. Oh. You know. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. Now, you have you have a website. You said you have your YouTube videos. Where can people find your information? Um, yeah, you can definitely find me at uh, MrLocario.com. That's M-R-L-O-C-A-R-I-O.com. And if you go on my website, you can um, download. I have a book, an e-book for men called The Magnificent Ten Crucial Dating Tips for Men. You can download that for free. And for ladies, I have an uh, audio program called Seven Highly Effective Steps to finding and keeping a man. So you can go there right now and download those. And I also have a, a membership program where I do a 45 through 90 minute um, dating advice tutorials every month uh, for men and women. So you can definitely like check that out on the um, members tab on the website. That's at mrlocario.com. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Locario, for being a guest on my show today. Definitely. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And thank you listeners for joining me here as well on Journey for Truth on webtalkradio.net. Take a moment and visit my website, empowermentthroughhealing.org, and you can sign up for my free newsletter. Until next time, have a fantastic week.